Hello guys, Nizi here. We have a lease of Baldur's Gate 3 coming year and year with each passing day. It's important for us to continue to get to know the origin companion that we will be interacting with a lot in the game. And this series focuses on the racial background. And today we will talk about Starion and his heritage of being a high elf, but at the same time of being a vampire spawn. So there's a lot to unpack. Without further delay, let's get to it. Before we continue, please consider biting that like and subscribe button so that we can continue sucking blood. Now let's get back to the video. So where do we begin? We can talk about the stallion's heritage as a high elf, how he is long lived. He's, he's at least 200 years old when he was turned uh, as a vampire, or rather as a vampire spawn. He has immunity to certain forms of sleep as, a, as an elf and he has pointy ears. But I think it would be more interesting to talk about him as a vampire spawn. Now, Vampire Spawn has a generation, spy, Spider Clan, like the movie, like the girl, the Exorcist, and he also has damage resistances. But he also has many of the classic weaknesses of vampires, like running water, exposure to sunlight, and having a stake driven through your heart. Now, this is further complicated by the fact that he has a tadpole, a little tadpole in his head. So, most of the weaknesses, it turns out, does not apply to him. But still, as a vampire spawn, most, since most of them were unwilling victims by the vampire lords who bit them, they usually seek revenge, or they suck up to their master. Some of them, having found themselves in such an unholy state, seek redemption, and do acts that would serve to make up for how low and how dirty they feel as being vampire spawns. But whatever the case may be, that makes them very motivated and dangerous. So where do vampire spawns come from? In Astarion's case, he was turned or sired by Kazador Zar. Uh, and Kazador Zar, came, before he became a vampire, came from a landed a powerful family which was murdered whole scale by a rival political family. Now, vampires as a whole uh, at least in the Forgotten Realm setting, the setting of Baldur's Gate, was thought to have come from, uh, was thought to have originated from Orcus, the Lord of Undead, making them in the, in the image of Hemanathon, the Blood Lord. I hope I'm not butchering his name. Hemanathon is the same primordial who was credited, who is credited for uh, the Blood Fiends. Now, further, there are other tales that all vampires came from Baron uh, Strad von Zarovich. Strad von Zarovich is a main uh, antagonist or anti-hero from another D&D setting, uh, but it's it's said that his his world or his pocket dimension is connected to all of the other uh, D&D settings, D&D worlds. So uh, there are some some who believe that. Uh, one of since Strahd is the original vampire in all of the in all of D and D, it is said that uh, vampires in each of the world may have come from his dimension or from yeah from his place. So as you can see, uh, Astarion has a very complicated heritage. It is both noble but at the same time it's both mired uh, in complication as being a vampire spawn. I wonder, since he was turned against his will, if he w is going to be seeking revenge in Baldur's Gate 3, or if he will be seeking to reconcile with his master. But at the same time, that decision is made more complicated by the fact that his he is not anymore under the control of his master. Having that tadpole in his head eliminated many of the weaknesses that he, he should have as a vampire spawn. And it makes this thing all the more interesting. So that ends our brief exploration of Astarion's racial background. If you guys are still here, thank you for stopping by. And as always, see you guys on the next one.